What is going on everybody? Jumbo Thick here, back with more Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 4th Edition Rise of the Forsaken Campaign. We are here on our 10th session, so that's a, uh, a big milestone for us. Um, 10 sessions, so that's almost 3 months worth of, of this campaign so far, and uh, hopefully more to come. I'm here with our dynamic duo. I, I, I mean, do you guys have like a name for your party or something? We should come up with uh, that eventually. Yeah, we should. Yeah. Uh, regardless, we are joined by Mr. Jumbo Smooth and Mr. Doobie209. If you guys want to go ahead and give yourself a brief introduction, I'm sure all the people know who you are by now. Hello, hello everyone. I'm Jumbo Smooth. I uh, I'm play the role of Marius Wolf. Human peasant, poor, six brass is my name. Yes. Strong, though. I love Very it. strong. Very strong. I mean, like, freakishly <laughs> strong. <laughs> so, and then Mr. Doobie. What's going on, guys? Doobie 209. I play uh, Seamus. Uh, he's pretty much the opposite of everything that Marius is. So, <laughs> Marius is short. Seamus is tall. It's true. Marius is mm-hmm. strong. Mm-hmm. Seamus is tough. So Seamus is a, uh, Seamus is also freakishly tough. You both are kind of extremes in that measure. So um, there is that going for you. Um, but yeah, yeah, you know, Seamus has armor. Marius has nothing. So there's also that. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, very true. Very true. <laughs> sp- speaking of uh, this session today. We actually attempted to um, record this and had a few um, technical difficulties. And so we are rehashing a little bit of this. Um, we're going to do all new roles, and I'm actually going to attempt to mix it a little up a little bit to make it interesting for the players. So uh, just so you know, some of this was recorded and then lost. So we're doing it again, just for all of you. But, uh, yeah, so um, last we left off, our um, heroes in our adventure thwarted the Beastmen um, war horde that was sieging the mining town of Sealburg, located in Wissenland, in the, uh, the south of the Empire, um, in the Grey Mountains. You, uh, Seamus, you're a local um, who disappeared for a few years magically somehow um is back in town with no memory of the past few years um mr wolf is a survivor of some kind we don't know much about his backstory yet but uh he also made it into town and he's been kind of a local resident uh, recently up until the attack you both not only survived you thwarted the leader of the war herd you survived a curse you talked to some crazy witches. You left a few men to die. That was a, a high point, I gotta say. Um, <laughs> you um, had some, did some drinking, met some people. You, you just, you did, you had a lot of adventure um, in the, the short time that we uh, we spent. <laughs> um, a break was had, and a few hooks were placed. And as soon as you know it, you were both. Prepositioned six months later, after doing a few, um, let's just call them endeavors, um, Mr. Wolf learned how to read with quite the uh, a feat for a rather <laughs> uneducated um, peasant, especially yeah, especially yeah. given your original background that we discussed. Um, I'd say reading and writing is is pretty high up there. Um, most people in town don't know how to do it, so that's very special. Learned how to read and write. Uh, Mr. Seamus, you learned a little bit about uh, the interesting, um, I'm calling it a dagger. Um, I don't know. Well, there's no proper term for it. So anyways, the, the unique dagger that you have that has some interesting properties. You haven't quite, uh, you've only scratched the surface of what might be there. Mm. But you learned a few things. You also reconnected with your mother, who is still alive. And is um disabled in a kind of way so um you're you've currently rekindled your relationship with her and you still are missing one brother and a father uh, one is um not present anymore he's obviously not with us 
you've been told that several times, though you have yet to actually go see his grave. So we'll cross that if that ever comes about. And that's pretty much it. Um, up until last session, where you both, through circumstances, um, were invited to visit the actual mine itself by the mining foreman, Mr. Brandyfoot, who put out a summons for a possible job for the two of you to uh, work together. Um, you both uh, decided you were going to take it. You ended up in the mine where then an explosion rocked the very foundations of the tunnel. You guys both being the heroes that you are, um, snuck your way uh, to the uh, fighting that uh, Mr. Seamus heard instead of, you know, going in there and saving the day. You just kind of gradually snuck up there. Um, everyone died. Uh, you did manage, I will say. You did at least through, through some good rolls. You did manage to save two individuals, but everyone else was dead. Um, so, um, currently as is two out, of five? Two, two out of five, two out of five isn't bad. Although I'm sure there was probably more people buried under the rubble. So I'm seeing there's probably a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, um, as is the fashion of our game, you are both carrying wounded in some way. Mr. Seamus is helping a, a, a less, lesser wounded man hobble his way out to the entrance to this little tunnel that leads into the massive tunnel that is the uh, the main part of the mine. And Marius is carrying a man with just destroyed crippled legs like the uh, the Dread Pirate Roberts that he embodies. And um, you currently walked out of the entrance to the collapsed part of the mine and you made it into the the actual main part of the mine itself when through the, the lack of light, you found two figures, short figures, um, approaching you at a very rapid pace. Did I leave anything out that you guys can remember? I did hail the the, the people right before yes. we... Yes, you did. Yes, you did. We should. Uh, we should. We should also did. include that. You did. You did. Uh, you did say something to them right before the end. So, with that out of the way, I guess let's just hop right into it. So, I'm gonna need both of you to make me a perception check. We're doing a roll right out of the gate. Out of the gate. So. All right. All right. I rolled a, a 50 out of 30. Yes. Uh, two uh, degrees of failure. Fails. That's fantastic. Um, yep. How about you, Mr. Seamus? Uh, 37 out of 51. Okay, good, good, good. So, Seamus, um, as is custom, you you uh, you get a, a decent a decent look about the dust that has um, filled most of the, uh, the the tunnel after the collapse that you guys walked through um, has coated everything and it's starting to settle but there's almost like a haze that you, and you can see these figures approaching and you especially can make out that they're very they're short very um, um, thick looking stout I guess it would be the term. Um, but they are indeed shorter than a normal person that you can tell as they are approaching. You can hear the clunk, clunk, clunk of armored feet, um, approaching both of you at, at a rapid play, a very rapid pace. They appear to be running in your direction. You also, right. um, get a whiff with that. Um, was that two degrees or one degree of success? 37, 40, it's one uh... degree. Yeah. Um, yeah, one degree. With one degree of success, you also... So the figures are approaching you from the entrance where you actually approach to get to this tunnel. To That would be to the left of where you are. To the right, you get just... An, in a Further down, there's a... One of the torch sconces is still lit. And you see a shadow briefly pass to your right. And you hear the... Pitter pattering of feet. What would you like to do? Mm. Now it is moving away from you. You can tell that, and you can tell that it's moving away. Uh, I will just note that uh, in memory and focus on the two guys that are coming. 
Okay. So the two guys start lumbering forward. Um, Marius, you're actually technically in the lead for this. No, actually, Seamus, you were in the lead. And then Marius called out. So yeah, we'll say you guys are pretty much side by side at this point. Um, though Marius is too preoccupied to see anything um, holding the, the man in his arms, um, as is usual, of course. So of course. Um, you, you hear the boof, boof, boof. Snowy thinks they might be there. And then you hear a crack. Shut up, Snowy. And then you hear uh, the the other voice. Um, you there. I see you. Calling out to both of you. Hello, friends. Are you with the mine? Friends, you say. Friends are foes, and yeah, these are—they're slowly approaching, very cautiously, to both of you. I've got—we have injured men here. We need help as soon as we can. Aye, and then you see gradually uh, as the the dust is starting to filter slower and lower. There, at this point, they're about probably twenty feet from you. You can see that these are very, very short figures. Um, they are about um, four and a half feet tall. They are definitely dwarves. Um, they both have this kind of earthen brown hair, or excuse me, earthen brown like um, eyes, iris color. It's very unique. And then they have a copper tint to all of their hair, including their beard, which their beard is very thick and it um, has grown about to their belly button. So it's long. But the both of you, um, having experience with Thordoom, would know that his is much longer, though it is not like dragging the ground or anything like that. But um, it would appear that these two are younger than Thordoom in some way. Though the two of you, not exactly experts on dwarven psychology or physiology, so <laughs> do with that as you will. To you, they probably look like ancient men, <laughs> but um, regardless... They are very sturdy looking. They're very thick, a lot, even more thick than um, Amberbelly. They are um, wearing um, very finely crafted, it looks like chainmail um, armor, visibly. And then there appears to be almost like a um, very uh, sturdy, but very finely crafted set of some kind of leather leggings as well as um, leather bracers and gauntlets. They also each have a shield in their hand on one arm and a axe in their other arm. And you do see you, Seamus, with your previous roll. You see that one of them is kind of... Um, his eyes are a little bit bigger than the, than the other person next to his. And he kind of has this... This odd look about him, like he's kind of dazed a little bit. And on his back, you can see the top of this massive, what you think might be some kind of war hammer. That's what he has across his back. It's just huge. Um, the other one has what appears to be um, maybe, maybe a crossbow. You're not sure, um, judging from the shape. But it is kind of draped around a uh, a cloak that they're both wearing. They're both wearing a um, a brown colored cloak. Um, it's the same color as their eyes. In fact, uh, kind of unique like that. But um, you see both of them, and they also each have a hammer dangling from their hip. Though the hammer looks um, it looks functional, but similar to the hammer you've seen um, Father Leiter use in battle it uh it's it looks functional but it doesn't look like it's meant for combat if that makes any sense okay. so you can see both of them and um the one on so if you're looking at them the one on your left um seamus and marius snorty heard the explosion where'd all the rat things go and door, and then you the uh, the dwarf next to him. You wazak! Shut your mouth! Listen! 
They're close. I smell them. And he's kind of like, you hear him like this, he tilts his head up and he's kind of taking in big wefts and his nostrils are just massive um, compared to your guys's. And um, you, the both of you don't smell anything. You smell absolutely nothing, especially being clogged with all the dirt and debris that's in your noses. But um, he, he at least appears like he's on the, on the, the scent of something, of some beast of some kind. Did you say, uh, don't recall, did you say, don't recall seeing oh. any rat things, but uh, we've got some injured men if you can help us with them. And then he, and as soon as you say that, you hear another set of feet, um, especially you, Seamus, you, you hear them much quieter, but another figure walks up behind the two of them. Um, for you, Marius, you, you notice it immediately. Um, you recognize the voice at least. Boys, boys, did you find the disturbance? And you recognize the voice as that of one Mr. Brandyfoot, the mining foreman. He walks up behind them. And um, Seamus, this is your first time at meeting Mr. Brandyfoot. He is four feet tall. So he is shorter than the dwarves by half a foot. And you can tell just from his stature and kind of his... Um, body type that he is definitely a halfling he has green eyes and a chestnut colored hair much like the dwarves next to him he is very stout and something that reminds you of a um shirtless marius he seems to be ripped just shredded <laughs> massive bulging muscles he's heavily tattooed from his arms down to his knuckles and even like some across his neck that you can see. There might be more underneath his clothing. You can't really tell. He has um, scars across most of his body that uh, cover up some of the tattoos. Um, Marius, you know from the uh, types of wounds that you've seen over the years that these are definitely probably from uh, mining scars, from like blasting accidents. They appear to be burn patterns and various things of that sort. He has a very large bulbous belly, which is kind of in contrast of his chiseled like arms and everything like that. He has three, even you can see in the low light, the glinting of three golden teeth um, in his, in the top of his mouth. And he also has an, a very large, like comically large bottle um, draped from his hip. That's kind of um, swashing back and forth, full of some unknown liquid, liquid as of yet. His arms are bare, which is why you can see the tattoos. And he appears to be um, have some kind of um, custom-made fingerless gloves that are, are made out of leather. Um, you're not sure exactly what that's all about, but he has those made. He also has what appears to be some kind of... Uh, leather jack of some kind and um, some kind of pants to go with that. He's also wearing a miner's helmet, um, which the two dwarves are also wearing miner's helmets as well, though the candles that are placed on them are not lit at the time. Um, none of these are. They're, they're lit. So you're just kind of getting this on the light that's kind of shining in behind them. Mr. Brandyfoot. We we have injured men here. It's it's me, Marius Wolf. Hi, Marius. I sent for you. You come to our aid, I see. And he and he looks to, it looks to the men. Hi, boys, hammerbacks. Take these men to the infirmary. And then, w w what infirmary? And that was a horrible like amalgamation of two voices <laughs> <laughs> doing too many voices at once oh, uh, what infirmary and then he gets sm and just a full on just like ridiculous like if you were to slug someone as hard as you can the other dwarf slugs Snorri across the face and his his jaw doesn't even move he just takes it full on in the face and he actually takes it takes a little bit of damage from the punch. It's that hard. Oh, So he just, oh. Oh, and he just like stupidly kind of shakes his head a little bit. Shut up, you wazik. Just take the man. 
and um, Snorri walks up to you, uh, Marius, and just kind of holds his arms out, and he kind of just has his head tilted down like a scolded child. <laughs> I I kind of gingerly hand him the the injured man yeah, that I'm and carrying. At this point, the man has just lost consciousness. He's just he was in so much pain. Um, his legs look horrible. Um, some of the blood is kind of dribbled across you. I've got to get at you bloody early. Um, <laughs> as you as you hand him over <laughs> to. Uh, <laughs> to to Snorri. Snorri just kind of takes him. And I mean, you're holding a full grown man, regardless of how strong you are. And you can see that there is no give whenever you hand him to Snorri. He just kind of has his arms firm, takes the man, and just kind of unceremoniously trots off. Um, likewise, uh, Dory walks up to um, you, Seamus, and just kind of um, motions for you to, to, to hand over the, the wounded miner. Uh, hand him over. Okay, and he he takes the arm and takes the man's arm that's draped over your shoulder, which you're like you're you're tall. Um, this miner is probably of average height in town, so he's probably closer to Marius's height. And um, it's it's hilarious because you know up when you were holding him, he's he's all kind of shifted up, and then as soon as the dwarf goes to take him, he's like his arm he's like shifted down, and um, none of the weight is off of his injured leg. And so the dwarf just kind of um, actually wraps, takes the takes one arm, wraps it around his neck, and then just kind of hoists him up with his other arm by his like waist. Just kind of picks him up off the ground, so he's not even touching the ground anymore, and just starts walking um, behind uh, behind Snorri as they walk towards the uh, the entrance of the mine, assumingly going to find some kind of infirmary that may or may not exist. Who knows? Um, Ooh. as far as you guys know, I will say this, you guys would have noticed this during the break, um, the six month, uh, gap that father Lichter was very upset the entire time his chapel his uh, his, the church of Sigmar was an infirmary. And as soon as the incursion was over, he made them move the infirmary elsewhere. So it is somewhere in town. You don't know, um, you don't make a habit of visiting it unless you absolutely have to. So uh, we'll find out at a later date if something happens. I don't know. Maybe you guys will yeah, get I'm sure, I'm sure, deadly I'm sure we'll disease. Or, yeah, exactly. Lose a finger. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. So I'm sure we'll, we'll find that out later. But regardless, they start trotting off. And then um, Brandyfoot locks eyes with the two of you. Well, you better follow me, boys. And he starts walking back. In the direction of Marius, which you know to be his office. Um, I would I would probably follow. Okay, I'll yeah. follow. All right, so I'm, I'm assuming you're following as well, Seamus? Yes. Okay, yes. Okay, good. So you both follow him, and it's not, the entrance to his office is an offshoot to the left. Now, as you're approaching, um, he is directing other miners that have been kind of um, either stupefied or like in shock out of what just happened. Um, an explosion is not supposed to happen this this um, high up here in the mine. But some of them look a little jaded, like this has happened a few times, and um, kind of nonchalant about everything. They're they're relighting the um, the, the torch sconces um, as best they can, moving down towards the affected area. And he organizes a few men to go help. Um, with the cleanup and assess the damage to the uh, the part of the mine that you guys both witnessed. And for the most part, he's just kind of mitiga uh, uh, mitigating leadership roles to people as he's walking past. And the mine does have a fair few of workers. Um, so he's actually in charge of a lot of people. And you can see that a lot of people are actually, more miners are even being pulled from outside after the um, after the incident to come help with aid. So he's kind of setting us up as you're walking. Um, Seamus, you would know, you know, with your 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 rather high perception, um, just on average, that you can hear the clink, clink, clink further down um, from where you know the smithy to be, Mr. Hugo Glasner, his blacksmith's workshop that's set up inside the mine. He appears to be working. It, 
And from the sounds of it, it appears like he never stopped working, uh, regardless of the explosion or whatnot. But you kind of can see the glow um, from the kind of offshoot of the tunnel that he's in further down to the right. But you guys make a sharp left. Um, Marius, I'm assuming you're in the lead. So you you make right. a left, um, and the tunnel doesn't go very far. Um, it goes probably 100 feet. 150 feet, something like that. Um, you can still see the entrance. It's very well lit right here. And it's very roomy. Um, it looks like um, alterations have been made to expand the space. Because the tunnels are usually just a... Uh, I'd probably say about 15 to 20 feet wide. This one appears that it's probably 30 or 40 feet wide. It's been expanded upon. And the roof is about average. About um, 10, 15 feet tall. Now... What both of you would have noticed, um, you more so, uh, Marius, all of the expansions off of all of the tunnels that you've gone into, with the exception of the um, expansion to the smithy for uh, Hugo Glasner smithing shop, all of the expansions appear to be um, recent in comparison to the main part of the mine. So they look like they were done by human hands you can tell just by the craftsmanship and kind of the the thick wooden beams instead of you know hardy stone pillars and it, it doesn't look like dolly work so a lot of this has been um expanded upon uh as far as you can tell you approach what appears to be a a wooden wall um set at the back of the tunnel there is a door um a full-size door with a, a uh, halfling-sized um, window. Uh, it's the perfect height for Brandyfoot to look through, so it's extremely low for the two of you. It's about belly button level for Seamus. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's, it's pretty short down there, and it, it, there's, a little, <laughs> there's a couple little... It looks like a slit curved in where you a sliding mechanism slides back and forth for you to open it to see who's outside the door um, without actually opening the door. And then off to the right of that door, um, into the wall is a very large, um, what you would assume would be a window, though you're inside, so it's obviously can't be a window to look outside, but there are these thick steel bars that are set into the window, and there's a opening in the steel bars where large things can be passed back and forth. And there's also a, um, what would you call that? Not, it's not a roll. It's not roll up. It's more of a, uh, a, like a metal shutter that can be pulled down to close off this space. Um, if need be, you get the idea that important things happen in this office. So, um, you see Brandyfoot approach the door and he fumbles in his pocket. Where'd I put the blasted? And he kind of mumbling to himself a little bit. And then he pulls out a ring of keys. Put, he methodically looks through a few of them, puts a key into the, into the lock next to the, uh, the little hatch that you saw, twists it and the door just pops in. It goes inwards. And he walks inside. Follow me, gentlemen. Follow me. All right. All right. The two of you follow him inside. Now, as soon as you enter, um, both of you give me perception checks. <coughs> oh, 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 boy. Oh boy! <laughs> I, I I have critical fail. I got a sixty-six. Yes, I love it. Do you want to re-roll that? <laughs> uh, sure. Why not? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Use that yeah, fortune yeah. point. Use that fortune point. Yeah. Ah, six. Oh well, shit! <laughs> How many degrees <laughs> of success 30. is that? <laughs> I have like two or two. Okay. Two. Yeah. All right, Seamus. Yeah, exactly. uh, what did yeah. you get? I got a 93. Yes. Oh. Do you want to re-roll yours? <laughs> uh, no. I'm no. going to hold no, no. on to mine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
that is fine. So Seamus, you're you know you're fascinated just by this tiny man. This is the only halfling you've seen besides um, Mr. Gold. Mr. Gold's kind of creepy, and it's just he's he's almost like the opposite of Mr. Gold. He's he looks like he's seen work. He's very hardy individual, and you're just fascinated. But you're kind of looking at the tattoos on his arms, and you're noticing that um, there's certain patterns in them. And you look like you might have seen them before. It's kind of it's kind of weird. Um, something seems familiar, but it's got you hooked. You can't quite place it, so you're not paying attention to much of anything else that's going on around you right now. So, Marius, um, you've never actually been in this office before. You've only done dealings through the barred window um, with um, Brandyfoot before. As you're walking inside, the door closes behind you, and um, this room is, uh, it's a pretty decent sized room. It's probably about um, 30 or 40 feet um, long, and it's as wide as the tunnel. Um, it looks like, um, as you're both glancing around, and you see you see a lot of this too, Seamus. You're, you're not blind. You're just kind of fixated <laughs> on, uh, on Brandyfoot for the moment. Um, you see that there are shelving, there's shelving units in place here. You can see that there is mining equipment. There's picks. There appears to be um, hammers. There's there's large nails, like railroad spike nails. There's a a couple carts, wooden uh, mining carts that are in here, probably spares or extras. Um, you see uh, candles. You see um, the actual wooden sconces. You see heavy timber stacked up in here. Looks like this might be a staging area of extra materials, possibly, or um, just a place where people store things at some point. Next to the shelving units, do you also see these very large, almost like um, metal bins of varying sizes? The largest bin appears to be full of raw ore of some kind. You're not sure exactly what it is. The one next to it, a little bit smaller, is full of what Marius immediately grabs your attention. Silver. Unrefined silver is just stacked in like fist-sized chunks and smaller inside this bin. Oh. It is the most wealth you've probably ever seen. Just sitting there. Now, this is unrefined, so it's still kind of in rock, yeah. kind of in quartz and things like that. But you can still see veins of silver. In the box next to that, in the bin next to that, it's a lot smaller bin. But you see a similar setup for gold. So there are veins of gold and these, these about fist-sized chunks of rock. And you get the idea that there is a lot of wealth sitting in this room. Then next to that, there is a smaller bin. And the both of you, um, well, Seamus, you don't see anything. You're too focused on um, Brandyfoot's <laughs> tattoos. Marius, you can see that there are glittering gems of some kind, probably precious stones. That um, You get the idea that, and you would know this, Marius, a lot of these metals, even though this is a silver mine primarily, a lot of these metals clump together and they get mixed together. And so you get a lot of everything when you open up a big mine like this. And there's even appears to be some kind of precious gems. You, you don't, you're not quite sure what color they are from where you're at, but you can tell just from the, um, the glinting of shadow and whatnot in this room, which this room is very well lit. I will put that out there. There are, um, large sconces on the walls, keeping the, uh, all of the uh, racks of, of equipment and material illuminated. And towards the back of the room, there is a large wooden oak desk that is halfling size. <laughs> so it's uh, it's still, it's like really big. Big enough that a, um, a human would sit comfortably behind it. But it's short. It's short to the ground. Almost like, a, uh, like an elementary school desk. <laughs> so yeah, um, it's, it's kind of short to the ground. But... Brainyfoot picks up the um, cart or the uh, the small satchel of gems, and he starts walking back towards the desk. He motions for the two of you to have a seat in human-sized chairs. They aren't in like you know <laughs> little tiny people chairs in front of the uh, <laughs> in front of the desk towards the back of the room. 
All right, I'll pull up a chair. I'm assuming... I do the same. Okay, good. So you both take a seat. Um, Marius, you being more perceptive, uh, ironically, for once, I know. you <laughs> glancing over at the top of the desk, you see um, Brandyfoot start um, fumbling in his pocket again with his keys. He's kind of, uh, and he's mumbling to himself. Then you hear a click, and you can see something move behind the desk. Um, it appears to be in the floor. Or maybe it's a drawer in the desk. You're not sure. Something clicks, moves, and you see him dump the contents of this uh, of this um, container into whatever that is he uh, opened. And then he shuts it, and you hear click again, and then he just tosses the container to the side. And he looks up at both of you. Well... Care for a drink, boys? I now we're talking. I'm always down for a drink. Hey, indeed. You look like the type. And he puts out three glasses. Um, well, I should say two glasses and a massive tankard. Um, he then takes the, uh, the large container that was on his hip, kind of un un unhooks it from his waist, and begins pouring. And this foul, pungent-smelling liquid wafts out of the battle as he un out of the uh, bottle as he uncorks it, and he pours a generous helping into each glass and the large tankard, and he pushes the glasses towards the two of you. All right, uh, I will reach for my glass, and then I will uh, introduce myself to him in the process. Okay, and um, do you take the glass? As you're doing introductions, yeah, okay, yeah. He um he has his in his little his halfling hands are small, but they they just look they look weathered, like grizzled, just just ripped finger muscles. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> um, and he extends his hand, grips your hand as you as you uh you take the uh the beverage, the odious brandy foot. Ah, Seamus McGreedy. Damn fine to meet you. Ah, indeed. I've heard many things about you, Mr. McGreedy. And he takes a big swig of his uh, of his drink and just starts gulping it down. Ah, I will do the same. How about you, Marius? Are you, uh, are you chugging your beverage of choice? Uh, I would like to <laughs> smell it first. What's it smell like? It smells horrendous. It smells like... Um, so, picture this. Um, you had the Gorillica that you used to make a Molotov um, um, mm -hmm. in the previous mm -hmm. adventure. Mm -hmm. You um, thought that that smelled bad. This smells worse. It smells like what we would both know of as rubbing alcohol. Um, oh. And you can tell that it's a very sharp... Like... Very sharp smell to it. You're not exactly sure what it would taste like, but you get the idea it's not going to be good. <laughs> yeah. And I've just had, like, you know, the filet mignon of... You have. You have. You, you've had... Beer. You've had yeah. Bugman's, Bugman's ale. ale. I mean, that's that's the that's the pinnacle of, of ale. So, uh, yeah. it's up to you. Mm. I, I'll... Uh... I'll take, I'll take one big swig, just to be polite. Okay. You know, a big squig. And see if that is enough. It's horrible. It, it burns your throat. <laughs> Especially in comparison to <sighs> the ale you had earlier today. It's just, it's not good. Um, you kind of wince a little bit, but you, you kind of hide it behind the mug. Um, as you <clears throat> casually uh, put it back <laughs> onto the desk. Um, Seamus, roll me a consume alcohol test, sir. All right. Uh, 37. Out of... Out of uh, 60, so about Dear two levels of success. God! <laughs> God, you're a tough bastard. I will drink people <laughs> under the table. Yeah, yeah, okay, so... <laughs> so, um... You easily... You, you guzzle this down, and you feel the warmth. It burns your throat on the way down, but... It's surprisingly to you, Seamus, 
this is this isn't bad. Um, you've had better, of course, but um, it kind of reminds you of a local brew that may or may not have been um, liberated from a few merchants back in the day that your father may have taken um, in your uh, your a, a past life at this time. Um, but um, it, it's not half bad. It's uh, it's okay to you. Mm. So you take it down. You don't feel any ill effects. You do feel the warmth, but um, you don't feel like you're you're getting any drunker or anything. You do have a, a a slight buzz, a slight buzz. We'll call it that. Little rose to your cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, you know, Brandyfoot kind of looks at you approvingly as you guzzle it down, slam your your mug or your yeah, your glass on the table. Hey, that's how. A local should definitely drink. And he, you know, he's he's motioning at you. He gets, he, he Brandy Foot's been here a while. He gets the idea of uh, kind of the people in town, though this is your first time meeting him. So he obviously wasn't here when you used to be here. But uh, <laughs> he's a staple nowadays, at least. Well, ah, I was raised on that stuff. Indeed, sir. Indeed, I can tell. Well, I'm sure you guys would like to get down to business. That was a quite the sad thing earlier. The third collapse this week, if I do r remember correctly. At this rate, the governor may have me gracing Moore's garden, or at least begging Shalia for mercy with a lack of production coming from this here mine. But you didn't come to hear me troubles, did you? Any kind of motions towards you, Marius? Uh, no, sir. I, I believe you had a job for us. Indeed, indeed. Mr. Wolf, you've been quite reliable these past few months, and should you want a place in this mine permanently, I would gladly grant it. That is, if, if it were up to me. Sadly, it's all up to the governor. But if you pull this off, I'll put in a good word for you. What do you say? Sounds good. Uh, good, Mr. Brandyfoot. Uh, I would very much like that. Aye, an accord is struck then. And he pours, he refills what little bit of your glass is left. And he kind of turns his nose up as he sees that you barely drank any. He refills oh. yours completely, Seamus, and then refills his mm. tankard that he has. And um, in my day, we drank to commemorate a partnership. Be a man's son. And he starts <laughs> downing his own. All right, uh, I will. I will down it, but I won't like it. Make me that consume alcohol <laughs> test with disadvantage. <laughs> right. Minus ten. All right, minus ten. Same for you, Seamus. M minus ten. Minus ten. Mm -hmm. Oh my. Uh, that's a 10 out of 34. You bastard. Okay. <laughs> How about you, Seamus? Uh, it'll be a 38 out of 50. Okay, you're still... You're both fine. Um, Seamus, it, it was just as good as it was the first time. Um, you, you, you take it all down. You're a little more flush now. You can feel you're getting a little hot, a little sweaty underneath the chain mail and the, uh, the leather armor that you're wearing. Um... Marius, it's horrible. You you drink the whole thing and it's just oh, it's just nothing compared to what you had earlier. It burns the throat, but you take it all down and you do it without flinching. Slam the beer the the glass back down and Brandyfoot just kind of nods his head approvingly. Now that's how you drink, son. That's how you drink. And it's funny. Um, you can't tell how old Theodius is. He's talking to both of you like your children compared to him. But he, if you were to judge him in like human standards, he looks like a teenager. Um, a gristled teenager. Uh, looks like he's seen, he's had a hard life, but he doesn't look, <laughs> he doesn't look like a, an elderly gentleman to both of you. But uh, his demeanor gives off a, uh, a different uh, idea. So... Um, with the accord struck, well, I suppose you might want to know what you guys are actually doing here. Seeing as you agreed to it and all. 
I am not much of a miner, so uh, curious as to why you needed me down here. Indeed, Miss McCready, indeed. See, this is uh, a bit of a simple scouting job for the two of you. You, sir, come highly recommended. My first choice had errands of her own to run, you see. Is it true you killed a rat from sixty paces with that there contraption? And he points at the uh, the crossbow you have slung over your shoulder. At the infamous story that has made its rounds <laughs> around town. Aye, Brandyfoot, everything you heard about me is true. Then you must have some good eyes. I'd ask you to lend them to Mr. Wolf as he finds and verifies another entrance further up the mountain. i been told he's not exactly the most um, perceptive individual. And he just kind of gives you a little bit of a jab, Marius. Oh, uh, well, good now, one, sir. You, you do good prospecting <laughs> the work, and I have faith in you. You see, these Dowie mines tend to have hidden entrances and vents coming home cunny. Ha! Honey combed into the mountains they delve. <laughs> I'm hoping to find access beyond where we have been running into spots of trouble. And who knows, maybe even some Dalby gold. If you perform this task in addition to my endorsement, Mr. Wolf, I will give each of you a silver piece. And he holds up two silver pieces in his right hand. Uh, Marius's eyes go wide. Oh kind of yes, sparkle. And it's, eyes, that is know, the most eight. money <laughs> you have ever. You, you know, you, you thought that the ore in the background was like the most wealth you've ever seen, which it technically is. But that silver yeah. piece, that is that Not, is yeah. free reign for months. Yeah. Um, to put this yeah. in perspective, to those of you that don't know much about Warhammer. Um, one silver is equal to 240 brass pieces. So um, it's worth a lot. <laughs> so you guys are both being offered a silver piece here. Now, Seamus, mm. I mean, this is a lot to you right now. In the past, maybe not so much. But as of right now, uh, mm -hmm. it, it looks appetizing for sure. Mm -hmm. Ah, silver, silver piece, you say? Uh, what, uh, what can you tell us about this job? Well, like I said, simple expedition. Need to find another way down into the mine. Hopefully avoid all these spots of trouble. Don't know exactly what's been going on with the explosives. There's been talk of treachery, but... Surely all of that went away with the beastmen. We got rid of that, uh... Unsavory fellow, Mr. Catch, I believe his name was. Maybe she doesn't say anything. <laughs> he says nothing. He says nothing. <laughs> he was. He was. He gave us a stern warning uh, from uh, going to freeze. <laughs> it's true. In that previous it's, episode, uh, that's fine. That's uh, fine. You know, uh, he he might he probably uh, for the viewers. Marius thinks otherwise, obviously. But of course, of course. He does not say anything. Got it. How about you, um, Seamus? Uh, hearing the name catch, uh, mm -hmm. Seamus will kind of look over to Marius, uh, then look back to uh, Brandyfoot and say, uh, you know, I heard some, uh, some little footsteps down in that tunnel before you came to see us. And uh, one of your men mentioned something about uh, some type of rat things. Aye, the hammerbacks. About that. Hey, don't listen to those boys. They're a bunch of superstitious lot. Believe in the underfolk they do. The Skaven. Are you? And he kind of just does that with like a whimsical, like kind of how do you do look? Like uh, it's definitely a fairy tale kind of look about him. Mm -hmm. Mister Mister Brandyfoot, if we happen to run across, um, you know, these Skaven as you call them, or Mutants or beastmen, goblins, what what have you? Would there be some type of reward for clearing out the the mine for you and your men? Well, surely you being a man, you do it for free, Marius. <laughs> I am a man, sir, but I'm also a poor man. 
and I take out my <laughs> coin purse and shake it. Um, <laughs> and you can hear the coin flap against leather. Yes. Make make me a a haggle roll. Sure. Eh? A last riding on this. Advantage? No. Hell no. What? Oh, Stay straight pop, pop, haggle. <laughs> All right, here we go. That's a nine. Oh my god. How many degrees is that? <laughs> That's almost three. It's thirty okay. it's out of thirty eight. So three? Three degrees? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And he kind of you know, he, he looks at you and he's and he kinda of bobs his head a little bit. Says, I tell you what, Mr. Wolf. Depending on what you're bringing me back, I doubt you find any of the under folk. Though the hills are said to be combed with green skin. Grow be filth. Oh, joy. Should you come across any of them? Bring me back an ear. I give you three brass an ear. Three brass, you say? Indeed, Sounds good, Mr. Wolf, uh, indeed. <laughs> Sounds good, Mr. Brandyfoot. You have yourself a deal? Of course, of I reach course. out my hand to shake. And he'll grasp the hand and he squeezes. Mm -hmm. He squeezes? He squeezes. Is this an aggressive squeeze? This is an aggressive <laughs> squeeze. <laughs> I aggressive squeeze back. Okay, make me that strength check. All right. That is 36 out of 55. Damn it. <laughs> okay. foot squeezes and um at first it's mm -hmm. firm but then you easily mm -hmm. you easily just start squeezing back and you can feel his hands start to uh, starting to kind of crumple in the fingers are starting to kind of clump together and he's kind of and he he just uh. has this smile on his face but you can see there's a bead of sweat starting to dribble down yeah. <laughs> that's the Mary's Mary's is just giving a big, kind of, um, big smile back. Just, ah, you know? <laughs> of course. <laughs> and so, Is something um, wrong? And know? he's, and he's <laughs> like, hey, might you find Grippy up <laughs> there, Mr. Wolf? <sighs> Thank you, sir. It's awfully kind of you to say. And then oh. I, I really wish, uh, okay. the, the grip. He kind of he 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 kind of pulls it behind his back, and you can and Seamus, you can see him kind of like flicking it back and forth, trying to like <laughs> set the bones back into place. Well, make a make a fine miner of you yet, son. And he um uh, moves back uh, to his desk. He, he, you see him reach back under the desk, maybe for um, um some more some more booze. He's got stash under there. I'll, uh. I will need you to not only find this here entrance, I'll need you to delve and make sure it connects with the mine beneath. Do that for me. And we have an accord, son. Everything we promised will be paid. Sounds good, sir. Would we be able to requisition some supplies for this, for this journey? Torches and rope and such. Well... Don't know about too many supplies. Surely you've got the things you possibly need for delving the mine, Marius. A but few things, sir. A few things. I can't have you working for me looking like that. And he kind of points at the uh, the peasant garb that you're wearing, just the 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 basic shirt and pants that you have uh, <laughs> at your disposal. Um, especially in comparison to Seamus, who is um, at this point heavily armored. For a resident yes. of town, um, you on the other <laughs> hand just look like just the average dude um, <laughs> walking around. <laughs> and so he he, um, he he stands up. Follow me, Mister Wolf, and he walks over to the shelving. Do you follow? I do. Okay, you follow behind him, and he starts kind of methodically pointing up at, at shelving units. He's combing through things. His hand stops on a certain kind of cubby. He reaches in and pulls out a helmet. 
It is a similar helmet you saw various miners wearing throughout this um, endeavor into the actual mine. It has a, um, a place on top of it where you can um, insert a candle. So it's almost like a hat slash lantern in one. He hands that to you. This will do. That, that should fit. And then he keeps combing, keeps going, keeps going. He reaches in, pulls out a, a handful of candles. He puts them in a sack and hands those back to you. So you have um, three candles. He then keeps on combing, combing. Aye, there they go. And he kind of looks at you, trying to gauge your size. Kind of puts a thumb up to you. Come here, boy, come here. And he kind of slaps you across the shoulders a couple times, kind of trying to figure out how wide you are. Uh, surprised at the um, uh, the muscles hidden beneath these kind of uh, peasant f flowing shirt. Yeah. And uh, then he reaches back into the last cubby and he pulls out a decently crafted, it's not fine work, leather jack. A leather and jack? hands it to you. It's a leather jack. Oh, it's yeah. it's oh. your first piece of armor in the campaign. And, and there down. is there's an emblem <laughs> on the back embolized. You've seen various miners wear this. It looks very similar to the one Brandyfoot's wearing. And it has like property of Sealberg mine basically kind of written on it, which you can now read, Marius, in addition to the um, pictogram of the mine that's actually written on it in Reichspiel. And he um, he hands you the jack. Now you you represent the mine, son. Thank you, Mr. Bradyford. This is this is great. Of course, of course. Put the helmet on. Uh, you know, I'm really excited to put on the leather jack. So I'm just trying oh, yeah. to put it on over my clothes. Yeah. So you you get that you get you get the jack on. It fits nice. It's he he got your size oh, down. Yeah. It, it fits good. Um, it is one point of armor for your torso. It does not cover your arms. Just your just your. Oh, your, I thought. It Okay. Um, leather jerkin, not jerkin. Oh, excuse me, jerkin. I said Jack, didn't I? Leather jerkin. Yeah, you got me. You got I'm me sorry. excited. I'm got you excited. Going. It's just, it's <laughs> just <laughs> the chest piece. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Write that down. I, I erased. I erased. I was like, oh, uh, I'm excited. Nope. Uh, no. Nope. <laughs> I had to get you one way. There we go. Uh, Stick it to you. Uh, <laughs> Goodbye, armor on my arm. <laughs> yep. I will see. No, I see Brandon for handing you, Brandon for handing you a, a jack, and he's like, "Oh wait, here you go." Oh, wait, yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. He's like, "Oh no, 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 that's for someone else." Um, but, here you uh, go. Here, uh, take this vest. <laughs> so, so yes, so you you put your vest on. It's still, it's better than what you're wearing. Obviously, um, true. It, true. it goes over your clothes. Um, you can yeah. secure. I'm assuming both of you have cloaks of some kind. You can secure that yeah. over it if you want. Um, yes, all that. So, uh, you got your your, your leather piece on, um, and he kind of um, just motions you. Well, if you're done, son, happy hunting. All right. Well, um, did he tell us what direction it is? We're just, we're just supposed to search. We're just he, didn't, to search. he didn't tell you. I mean, you could ask him okay. if you want. Yeah. Um, Mr. Brandyfoot, would you perhaps know a, a good area to start our search? Hey, it's funny you ask that. Master Seamus, the one who recommended you, told me about an old game trail further out from town. Said that you can get above the mine more safely than simply scaling the cliffs. Though the choice is yours. Of course, the cliffs is the more manly way. And he elbows you, Marius. Uh, oh. Um, and you get the idea he's talking about the actual cliff faces outside of the mine. Like just climbing up the uh, yeah. some, of, some of the actual mountain to get just above it that way. Yeah. And then, the um, easier and, way is above the above the like 
climbing the cliff above so, the line or so, going around. So essentially, he's given you two. He he. All he's given you is two. Mm-hmm. You can make whatever choices you want. Do whatever you want. But he's basically mentioned yeah. an old game path outside of town that might lead mm-hmm. above the town up top of the mountain somewhere. Okay. Or you can always just climb up from where you are now, and eventually you'll get up there. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so those are your, you know that's what that, that those were his suggestions. Um, he's not okay. a an outdoorsman, so just keep yeah. that in mind. Um, <laughs> yeah, and as soon as he gets done saying that, you hear a boom, 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 boom. Oh, Brandyford, Dory says they they need your help down at the. The accident, and Brandy Foot just kind of lowers his head. He's like, "Oh God, be right there, Snorty, be right there." And you hear the boop, 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 boop of, of uh, Snorty Hammerback walking off down the mine as loud as possible. <laughs> well, boys, if you excuse me, Pierce, I have business to handle. All right, all right, Mr. Brandy Foot. We'll, we'll be on our way as well. Okay. So he motions for you to step out. Yeah. Okay, as you step out, he turns around, shuts the door, and locks it with the keys, and then puts the keys back into a uh, hip pouch of some kind. And he begins walking ahead of you. Hangs a right and starts disappearing into the mine, unless you guys choose to follow him. So, um, you guys now have been given some direction. What would you guys like to do? Uh, Seamus, uh, what do you think we should do? Uh, take the take the path or try to scale the cliffs? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I'm not watched for uh, scaling a cliff, so... Uh... I say we take the path. Sounds good. Uh, I assume you probably know the the paths around here pretty well. I I know every path which way here to <laughs> where do you want to go? <laughs> of course. Oh, 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 oh. All right, all right. Sounds sounds good, friend. Well, I'll I'll follow you. Lead. Do you think we should go get supplies first, perhaps? I probably should. Uh... Looks like I gotta pay for it though. You don't have much money. Start so jingling that pathetic pouch. <laughs> don't make one of my pounds, sir. Uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, nice. I guess we'll have to get some supplies. All right, sounds good. I guess we'll have to go to Mr. Gold. Ooh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so where where are you guys heading? Mr. Gold's. I oh, is, 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 yes. he, is he the only like, just like general it, store? Um, you know what? Go ahead and he, he is as of right now. He is essentially. It's a basically a pawn shop. You guys have been inside of it. It um, it's not exactly a great place, but he has a little bit of everything. Um, he is essentially the general store. Um, right now. Um, there's been a couple mm-hmm. other peddlers, um, depending on what you guys are looking for. Um, I particular would be looking for like, like camping stuff, I guess, like maybe like a tent or something. Do you, you don't have any of that stuff already? No, I have a no. backpack and a blanket, um, and a cloak. Okay. Um, let's see here. How about you, Marius? Do you have any of that stuff that you could ba- possibly share? Or do you guys need to both purchase these? I don't have a tent. You know, I, I have, I have like a, like a, yeah, like a, a blanket and a cloak and like a knapsack. Mm-hmm. And I think I have one torch and the day's rations. Okay. But, well, it's yeah. up to you guys. Yeah. Um, you can either, here's what we can do. You can either make me a um, gossip roll to search out possibly someone else that might sell you something in town, 
or you can just go to Mr. Gold's. Because you got an idea, oh. you could probably find anything you want at Mr. Gold's. But um, if you don't want to deal with him, there's always op other options, possibly. <laughs> All right, well, I'll make a roll just to see. see what we okay, get. okay. Uh, not good. Critical failure, 66. <laughs> okay. You've asked around. <laughs> you know, you guys get outside of the mine. You ask around a little bit, and nobody, they're like, just, just go to Gold's. <laughs> that's that's all you get. That's all you get. So, <laughs> uh, well, man, uh, looks like we gotta go see your friend. Oh, I can't. I can't wait. It's gonna be such a pleasant interaction. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Okay, so we are heading to Mister Gold. You make your way out of the mine. Um. You get into the town square, well, town circle. You see the Church of Sigmar. It looks like Father Lichter is um, pinning something, like some kind of note or something. He's pinning it to the uh, the outside of the uh, of the chapel doors. Um, he looks in your direction, Marius, and just kind of nods his head. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I nod back. Yeah, of course. Can um, I read the note from here? You not from here. Not you're 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 too oh, far okay. away. Um, if you're unless you want to go over there and read it. No. Okay. All right. So you're you're walking. You walk past him to make your way to Golds. You have to hang a right past the church, um, uh, further down um, than you could would be able to get a good look at the note. But you see him further down. You see um, you're you're passing by. There's a couple food merchants that have kind of set up. This is shortly after lunchtime, so there's there's still some some the smells of like freshly baked pies and cooked meat and things like that. Things of that sort. Um, there's a few peddlers here in the town center. There's children running around. Um, mostly women are doing the selling. Um, very few men. You get the idea that most of the men in town are probably working in the mine at the moment. Um, that seems to be the main, uh, mode of employment currently. You do see a couple guards walking around. Well, not guards, the town watch essentially walking around um, inside of town now, though you don't see um, Otto. Otto, from what you guys both know, old man Otto is basically mans the gate, essentially, is what he's been doing. Um, and he seems to probably have been promoted to captain of the watch since uh, the Beastmen um, fiasco. So, you hang your rights, you get off into the poor quarter, you see... The shoddy excuse of a building, the two-story building that is Mr. Gold's residence. It looks just as horrible as it did before. <laughs> Doesn't look like many repairs have been made. Um, the the second story in particular is kind of a little looks a little shaky. Nice gust of wind might knock it over at any moment. Um, you also um, do see the cracked window. It is la it is still cracked. Um, cracked open, that is, not not shuttered, um, uh, on the second story. And you still see a little bit of dried blackish tint underneath the windowsill, um, if you guys remember what happened previously. You uh, approach the front doors, open them. Who is entering first? Uh, probably Marius, his best bud. Yes. Oh, oh all right. <laughs> Marius, you, you push open the doors to Mr. Gold. They're kind of shoddily built, put together. You do see the emblem of this, the gold tooth that is the, the main marking for his shop. There actually is no writing. Um, he caters to uh, certain types of people. So he expects them to not be able to read and write. Um, <laughs> yeah. You enter. Now that you've been in here before, it looks pretty much the same. Now, it does look like it's more well-stocked than it was the last time you were in here, because the last time was during the siege of the town. It looks like he's been able to resupply a lot of his um, goods at this point. You do see the large, foreboding, fat um, image of Oro sitting on his comically small stool in the corner to your right as soon as you walk through. 
Um, and he's, he appears to be like gnawing on something. You're not sure what it is. He's always eating every time you ever see him. He's got, he still has his, his monocle, the, like the bottom of a glass that's been hammered over his right eye. And, uh, of course the, the jewelry and earrings and things like that. And the very flowery kind of flowing, um, shirt and things that he's wearing that he, you know, he, he looks fancy, at least in his eyes. Um, to the rest of you, it looks like a uh, disaster of some kind of knit together Frankenstein garment, but to him, it's fantastic. You, you walk in, you see him and he just kind of nods at you. Um, have you, have either of you entered Mr. Gold's since the last time? No, uh, no, no. Okay. So no, wait, 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 wait. I think Mary I did. did. I did because of my, um, uh, what are they called? Your endeavor? Endeavors, yes. Oh, that's endeavors, right. I yeah, yeah, more. yeah. You had to, to buy the, the booze from him. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. So he's seen you since then. So he's he's calmed down quite a bit since the last time you saw him. Um, mm. You probably hashed out some things, um, especially since you finally bought yeah. something. Uh, yeah. So he so he he's he's let some things go, but you see him Who, behind Oro the or Mr. Gold. Mr. Gold. Okay. I thought you were talking about Oro. No, 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 Oro no. Had no. Beef? no, Oro did not have beef. Oro <laughs> Oro is stupidly gnawing on something in the corner. He does he only does as okay. he's told. Oro's over there. Now Mr. Gold is behind the counter. He's rummaging underneath something. You you can see the um 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 very the like uh brown kind of thinning hair um underneath this like gaudy looking hat that he appears to have bought at some point um if for, if you don't remember he uh he's only like three and a half feet tall so he's actually shorter than brandyfoot uh <laughs> so yeah that red the russet kind of reddish brown hair is kind of haphazardly coming out from under this hat he's got this 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 big broad smile as he comes up i mr wolf seamus you come back do you and he starts clinking his fingers together with the the all the the gaudy ridiculous rings clinking back and forth came back to mr golds did ya <laughs> uh, couldn't resist of course, of course. Mr. Gold has everything you need, everything you could desire. Uh, that's what I've been told. And he, he wafts his, his hands out, motioning to the gloriousness that is this pawn shop. Um, with the rickety shelving, looks like it's about to fall over. And, um, please, please, tell me, what do you need? Uh, well, uh, I was looking for uh, see if you had like a bedroll or uh, maybe like a canvas to make some type of tent out of. Bedroll, you say? Canvas? Hmm. He starts kind of scratching his chin. He um, points over to a uh, a set of shelves at the far side of the um, of the store. Bedrolls and canvases. Um, can. We'll call them bedrolls. Uh, far, far side over there. And he looks over to you, Wolf. What, what can I get you, Marius? Um, I'm thinking about a, a bedroll. You know, bedroll as well. I think that's okay. <laughs> and may possibly a little bit of rope as well. Rope. Okay. Okay. I've got plenty of rope. Um. Gosh, what's a good range of rope? Uh, 50 foot 100 50, foot 50 foot 50 foot sounds i guess good okay yeah and he he okay. points you back towards the same section um you could probably find something back there you know how this okay. works man yes you know how this works just go get what you want bring it up here i'll tell you what we got we'll strike an accord right. and he starts clinking oh, his fingers together course, greedily i'm sure we will i'm sure we will uh and I go and look for the, the rope and bedroll. Got it. Um, shame. You guys both go over to in the direction he was pointing. You pass um, some some like pots of 
some unknown liquid or not, not pots, kind of like containers of things and one set of shelving. Um, you pass, it looks like there's um, like writing quills and some kind of like disgusting looking, extremely used, look like it should be in a trash pile, like set of books. Um, there is um, a entire rack that you walk by full of like extremely used and still bloodied weapons. Um, and you recognize oh. some of them that were probably picked up uh, <laughs> from the previous battle. Um, a few of them look of um, suspicious origin, may or may not hey, be hu made by humans, possibly something else. Oh, gee. Um, the, just judging by the craftsmanship, that looks like something's been hammered together. There is an assortment of armor as well. Um, you can probably guess what kind of quality of armor you might be getting from Mr. Gold, uh, but it is on display. Um, nothing has a, like a price tag on it. Um, basically, at his shop, <laughs> you pick out what you want, you bring it to the front, and then you barter a deal. <laughs> so that's how this is going to work. Right. <laughs> so you guys make it to the far end. Um, you find you can easily find 50 feet of rope. That's, that's not going to be a problem. Okay. Um, you find some rope, you go ahead and <laughs> just, just to, to see what we find, it, the, the quality uh, of item we get a hold uh, of here. <laughs> all right. Um, go ahead and make me a perception roll. Perception. Right. This Shame place is, rope for me. this place is <laughs> filthy and it's just, you know, things are in weird places. So we'll see how, uh, how decent you do. Okay. Mm. Ooh. Uh, I got a 41 out of 30 for my, for my for my perception. Yes. So <laughs> you find a rope. It's it's it looks to be the right length. The end is a little <laughs> frayed, but out of all the rope yeah. that you see, it it's it'll probably do. It's definitely not going to break okay. the first time you put any weight on it. It, it looks sturdy. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Go ahead. You kind of sure. you kind of right. pull it taut a couple times, and it kind of flexes. Uh, it's probably fine. I mean, and I put weight on it. Like I pull with my strength. And you pull. You pull with your strength, and it it has a little give to it. But uh, that should that's to be expected. It doesn't like fray okay. instantly. <laughs> instantly. Okay. All right. <laughs> well. I guess since my perception was bad, I'll probably be like, well, it's good good enough for me. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is a good piece of rope. So you, you collect your rope. Um, how about you, Seamus? Uh, all right. Uh, oh, it's going to be close. Ooh, I got a 50 out of 51. Oh, Ooh, okay. Are you, what are you, so you're looking for bedroll and what else? Uh, yeah, the bedroll, and then if he doesn't have like what I can notice the tents, probably like like a big sheet of canvas to like make a a framed tent. Or okay, something. okay, okay. Now I will say this, Marius. Um, just because of the camp setup that you had, um, outside of town, uh -huh. you would have access to a uh, a basic bedroll just for you. Okay, and you would have. Okay. Kind of what Seamus is asking for, um, just because right. you would you, there'd be a couple times you might need to bed down out there, so you would have those two things. You would have like a large sheet essentially that you could kind of rig up. Okay. It's it's not like an official tent, but something yeah. that you could probably rig up for shelter. Um, do you still yeah. want to look for that, Seamus, for yourself? Uh, the bedroll definitely. Okay. Okay. So, um, with your just barely passing, um, you, <laughs> you start looking, there's a, there's a couple bedrolls. They're kind of bundled up. They're rolled up. Um, you have the foresight to unroll a few of them. The first one you pick up, man, this looks like it's pretty good. It's, 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 it's made of a nice firm material. You unroll it and there is a massive, just like man size hole in the center of it. <laughs> Um, that you wouldn't have known was there unless you unrolled the thing. Um, it would have Ooh. given you no rest or shelter had you picked it up. So you you roll you roll it back. You're like, oh, Dev, that's definitely not the one. Um, you go to the next one, and it looks a little looks a little used. 
looks slightly used. You unroll it, it smells like shit. Somebody's shit in this <laughs> bedroll. Um, <laughs> it's bad. And you you immediately smell. It. You're like, oh, and you cover your your uh, your your mouth and nose, and you hear um you hear this this piping up from the corner. Hmm. Oro thinks something smells nice. Oh. And you just kind of roll it back up. Then you go to the last one. And it looks, it, this one looks used. It looks rough. Looks like it's been used quite a bit. There's a couple tears, small tears. But you want to roll it and it seems put together. So this is probably the best out of the three. All right, and I'll grab that one, tuck it under my arm. Okay. You both approach the front. Yes, yes. What did we grab? Mr. Wolf, Mr. Wolf, pass it here, pass it here. Mr. Gold shall deliver. I handed the rope. Um, oh, fine craftsmanship, you see. Look, look here. And he kind of is like caressing it. Um, as he caresses it, one of the one of the like um, pieces just kind of pops out. He's like, oh, and he kind of smooths it over real quick. Oh, yes, <laughs> excellent craftsmanship. Yes. If I do say so myself. I'm sure you do say so, Mister Gold. And I. I couldn't help but notice, Mr. Gold, I saw all these weapons, bloodied and armor. They appear to be from the battle. I don't remember you being there. Oh, <laughs> that's just, <laughs> and he just kind of waves you off, kind of not, not wanting to answer the question. Um, I don't remember seeing your big friend Oro <laughs> there either. Oh, you, you, of course, we, we, we did our parts, <laughs> you know, as, my, uh, as uh, fine oh. members of the community. I mean, surely. Of course, Mr. Gold, of course. Of course. And I'll be course, sure to sing course. your praises. I'll be sure to sing your praises, sir, if you give us a good deal on these items. Oh, go ahead and make me an int <laughs> intimidation check. <laughs> okay. That is a 31 out of 55. Mm. Ooh, okay. All right. So... With your threat being known, um, he just kind <laughs> of, of course, Master Wolf, of course. And he kind of, kind of sinks into himself for a second, and then he, um, he looks at the rope over, and he, he gets out an abacus from, <laughs> from underneath. Oh the, yeah, he gets out an abacus. <laughs> he gets out an abacus, and he starts. He starts tallying back and forth, and he's kind of, you know, in his in his mind, you know, it. The movements are extremely exaggerated. You know, he's like he's really thinking, um, back and forth. Yeah. Oh, yeah, what's this? But the fine quality, the fine quality, and he's and he's moving back and forth, back and forth. Marius, Marius glances at Seamus, rolls his eyes, and glances back at. Uh, Mr. Gold and Mr. <laughs> Gold doesn't. He doesn't even. He doesn't even notice at all. He hasn't. He's he's too enthralled with the charade that he's putting on for everyone, and he's uh, 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 six brass, six brass, <laughs> six brass for such fine craftsmanship. Surely you see this will save your life. Can I evaluate? Yeah, yeah, go ahead and evaluate. Do you have evaluate? I do. Go ahead, make me an evaluate on what you right. think this rope might be worth. Uh, that's an 18 out of 41. Okay, so to you, this bro, this this rope looks like in, in the condition it's in, you would mm. pay four brass for this rope. Okay, so it's not too generous here off. It's That's not really too far off, but it's off. Yeah. Okay. Um, and <laughs> and that's that's just I'm, I'm basing this off of your previous perception test of what a yeah, decent yeah. rope would cost. So just keep that in mind. Open. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Gold, I mean, could we at least bring it down to to three? You know, I mean. Six just seems a little high, you know. I'm just a prospector, so I don't make too much money. But I want to support a local business like yourself, so please, just, just three three brass. 
Make me I kind of a... shove three brass kind of towards him. You, are, you, you shove it towards him? Yeah, um, yeah. And now, this could go either way. I'll let you pick. Either charm okay. or intimidation. You can pick. Ooh. Of choice. I'm going with intimidate. Okay, okay. Intimidate. So it's, this is a forceful push of this money <laughs> towards yes. him. Yes, okay. <laughs> Um, that would be a 23 out of 55. Okay. So you, you just push it and I mean, and it, it kind of rebounds off of like a, like this knot that was in the top and one of the pieces kind of p- plucks him in the head. He's like, Oh, uh, 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 of, of course, Master Wolf, of course, of course, three, three passes, fine, fine indeed. And he's looking over at Oro like, you dumb motherfucker. He's like, oh no, oh no, I might need you. And Oro's just like, just like, he, Oro is actually looking through the shelving for that delicious smell that he, that he looked at earlier. He's just going, mm. he, in the, where you guys previously were, he's, he's making his way to the bed rolls. So he's oblivious to what's going on. He's like, I gotta get plundering. Oh, and he t- he scoops up the three brass and quickly pockets it before you guys can change your mind. And then he looks over to to Seamus. Mm, I see. Uh, fine material this is. Like, let, let, let me see. Let me see. Yeah. You hand it over to him. Yeah. Okay. He takes the bedroll, and he doesn't. He he purposely doesn't unroll it. Um. You get the idea that he uh, he knew um, what some of the condition of the bedrolls were in, and he purposely is going making sure that you don't see anything. <laughs> so he he kind of looks over. Mm, oh yes, yes, this fine quality. Uh, this might be Arabian fabric. I mean, oh, very expensive, expensive indeed. <laughs> and he's and he starts on the abacus. He's back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And for you, Master Seamus, ten brass for such a fine quality item. Mm. You know what? I have evaluate. I want to give this a shot. <laughs> Go ahead and yeah. evaluate. <laughs> oh, oh! I rolled a, a one. A, oh shit! Critical success. <laughs> Uh, critical success. Okay, so you oh, know the biggest critical success there could be. Given the <laughs> you know looking at this thing, given the condition it's in, a normal bedroll would probably go for six brass. A normal bed like a a nice quality bedroll. Mm. You'd probably give three for this. Oh, <laughs> All right. Ah, uh, uh, Mr. Gold, Mr. Gold. We've been through this before. I uh, don't know what I you're you, saying, I, Mr. Uh, he's gonna, Mr. He's kind of he, he nervously is touching one of his rings. I'll tell you what, Mr. Gold. I will give you five brass. But you got to throw something else in with this. Oh. Do you have any pots or pans? Indeed, indeed. No. And he, um, um, he, he, he offers Marius, to take the Marius, to take the brass. Marius kind of chimes in, um, kind of whispers in the chance here. Um, I do, I do have a pan. If, if if you need a pan, I'll tell you what. We'll just do the five brass. Take it or leave it, <laughs> Mr. Gold. <laughs> Of course, of course, of course. That's it's a fine deal. You heroes of the town, you are heroes. Let me, let me. His hands are kind of clutching towards where the money should be. Right, I pull out, I'll slide my five brass across the counter. Okay, he, he scoops it up the moment it leaves your fingers. <laughs> he greedily shoves it down in his pocket. <laughs> fine purchase, fine purchase. <laughs> Please leave. And he he's uh, he he takes the abacus, <laughs> stores it, and he he um. Oh no! Oh no! You clumsy fool! Oh no! And Ordo kind of stomps back up up to the up to the counter, and he's like, "Come, come this way! Come this way!" And he motions for them to go into the back. We have we have business to attend to, some accounting to do. If you'd please make yourself scarce. All right. 
right. All right. I, I'll walk so, out. Okay. So to walk out the door, um, I turn around. Um, I ask Seamus for my Molotov cocktail. Mm-hmm. Oh, and yeah, yeah. I, no, I don't do anything. I'm <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you burn Mr. Gold Black. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! <Smoke> out. <laughs> Got dark there for a second. It did. It did. Oh. Continue. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we just walk. I just walk out the door. Yeah. Okay. And where are you guys heading to now? Uh, I'll turn to Marius and say, uh. Marius, you didn't by chance bring all of your uh, your stuff into town with you. Do we need to go to your campsite to get it? Uh, DM question, do I have that stuff in town? You would have it stored have been... at the Thaggy. Um, so it'd be easy to okay. get a hold of. Um, I mean, you don't. I'm okay. assuming you don't carry all of your possessions on you at all no, times. No, no. <laughs> so, yeah. Nah. Yeah. I think we just need to stop, stop by the Thaggy, uh, my friend, and um, I should be able to get my belongings pretty quickly, and we should be able to head out. Ah. Well, uh, last time we go to the Taggy and have a drink or two before we head out. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh. All right. This could be the, la- the last time we get us some alcohol, you know. Okay, all right. Are you just so going you on a trip to... outside of town? I mean, come on. What could happen? <laughs> uh, what, what could happen? <laughs> We're know? going up a mountain. <laughs> so yeah, that's true. Going in a mine. That is true. <laughs> um, so um, with the accord struck and with you guys exiting Mr. Gold's and making a plan to um, head over to um, the Silver Thaggy, do you guys, are you going to make it quick at the Thaggy or are you planning on um, uh, like staying for drinks? Uh, I, I, if, if Thordum can answer questions related to what we're okay. doing, I'll probably okay, that's fine. For a that's drink fine. That's fine. So yeah, okay. so we will take our first break here then, and then we will pick this up um, very soon. All right.